everybody, it's Norm from Tested here at Wonderfest 2023. And I get to finally meet a longtime online friend, Jason Eaton. Jason. Pleasure to meet you. Oh my goodness. It's, it's why we flew out here. Oh, uh, Well, come also on. To, to see your models. Wow. Uh, well, Jason, you are a veteran model maker, uh, very well known in the Star Wars model making community. Uh, one of your, the, the, the models that you've built so many times, <laughs> yeah. iterated on, I want to talk yes. about, is your X Wing. Mm -hmm. This is one of your latest X Wings? This is the latest and greatest. Uh, I can say that this is. I finally, after over 20 years of building X-Wings, I'm like, okay, I, I like this one. This one, like, I, I'm, I can't really find anything wrong with it, which is very rare yeah. for, for me, anyway. Well, tell yeah. me about that journey of 20 years of building X-Wings yeah. and I mean, studio-scale X-Wings, of course. Yes, yeah. So, I mean, it goes back further. When I was a kid, I, I built models, and, and I feel like everyone who likes Star Wars that ever built anything has probably built an X-Wing, because yeah. it's just so iconic, it's so wonderful. Uh, and I just love the design. And uh, like so many people in the late 90s, uh, I found the RPF mm -hmm. and uh, started realizing that people were banding together and trying to recreate the originals, which is something that you as, as a kid dreamed about, but you're like, this, how, where do I start? Yeah. You know, like you're living on the wrong coast and you're 10 years too young to like key into that scene over there. It was a dark you know. times. Yeah, it was very dark, <laughs> yes. Um, so I, I, I kind of got really interested in it and there was, um, to backtrack a little bit, there was a uh, a model rocket. For, uh, it's called the Maxi Brute. Estes made it, um, and there were people would would buy this and try to kludge it into an X-wing. Years pass. We we come to find out it's actually very close to the studio to scale. the studio scale. Oh. Um, they they had really good reference. So th this thing gets sort of ignored, but but I'm I'm kind of amazed at how you know how almost bang on they got a lot of the dimensions. But uh, f most everyone at the time got what was called the Captain Cardboard X-Wings. This guy named Scott, his handle was Captain Cardboard. And uh, the, the provenance of, of that model that he made was, um, it was a pyro X-Wing, which was generally thinner and, and just slightly different than the heroes. This is a representation of the heroes, so this is a different beast altogether. Mm -hmm. But Pyro like the one that went on auction last year. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, molds were made, casts were made, casts were made for friends. Uh, it just sort of filters over the years. And every time something's recast, you have generational yes. shrinkage. So uh, you've got this, this Captain Cardboard, and everybody was super into it, and everyone built one. I built a ton. Uh, just, you know, for, for giggles, you can, you can see how just off at it, like if you center the cockpit, you can see it's, it's right. you know. Yeah, and yeah. It, you're, you're talking, you know, like half an inch, an inch, you know, whatever, but that's the stuff that keeps me up at night. Like, I, I gotta get the dimensions, you know, accurate. And so over the years, you know, with photos, with a little bit of reference, with a little bit of insider information, if somebody like laid hands on something once and said, that, you know, that's 3.15, whatever, you know, uh, we started repatterning and recreating, and we got up to version, f you know, if this is considered version one, we got up to what we call the V5, affectionately, you know. Uh, and it's it's the fifth iteration of trying to get it to a hero. That That's always been my push. I'm like, I like the pyros, but they're just a totally different animal. And I wanted to get, like, you know, it's, the hero's fatter, it's wider. Uh, we come to find out they're pretty much bespoke. Each one was hand done. The top was a resin shell, the bottom was a vacuum form shell, and things were hand scribed. So landmarks are all over the place with each bird. It's kind of a nightmare, but I also love that challenge. And it also like kind of gives them all that soul. Mm. So, uh, you know, again, the V5, it's like close but no cigar, but you know, we're getting there, we're getting really close. And I, for, for- You're not trying to recreate a specific hero model. It's like the, the idealized version? Or? Well, okay. So, at, yeah, at the time we were all kind of aiming for like a generic red five, yeah. like as a baseline. And then if somebody was wacky enough to build a different one, most people want to build Luke shit. Yeah. But you know, if you want to do red two, then it's like up to you to figure that out. Um, and also the hero wings ha are, are laminated so that you can see underneath and through. Oh, uh, and there's wow. extra details. That's a ton a, of engine detail. Yeah, on a pyro, it, it's just little, you know, they clayed it up, little mm -hmm. cutouts, whatever. Um, so, you know, now it's like 2018, 2019. Uh, I'm still trying to refine and make things better. Uh, I'm now doing like a, a version of a laminated wing. You know, we had a little, the V5 came with like a resin top and, and, a, and a, a laser cut acrylic like bottom part. Uh, and that was pretty great. Uh, it has its own, you know, 
drawbacks, whatever, because it's, you know, like sometimes it would bow a little bit, but it's fine. The wings, when they closed, wouldn't exactly close all the way, and that, again, is something <laughs> that was just like, we can, we can do it, which is funny because it's something apparently the originals didn't really yeah, do yeah. very well anyway. So I'm, now I'm aiming above what I should be. Right, right. Which well, is something for the last of, years and years, yeah, not just for filming. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, we're, yeah, you're building it for a different thing. So I, I'm now friends with some of the ILMers that made the originals. And one of them, you know, messages me and he's like, hey, I'm cleaning out a closet, found some X-Wing stuff. I know X-Wing is your jam and you're trying to make it better. Would you like me to send you that stuff? Yes, Didn't please. know what it was. And I was like, please and thank you. Yeah. And then a box arrives like a week and a half later. It's like a recycled Amazon box with like newspaper and shopping bags as packaging. Not sent priority, just sent in the mail, you know. A miracle that anything survived in there, considering how the packages are treated sometimes. And it was a complete half pyro shell. Unused. This is all from 76, but n unused. Like it was just, something was slightly miscast or just didn't get made. Yeah, so it's not screen used, but it's from the molds. It's not recast, it's ground zero. Had a pyro half shell and I'm like over the moon about that. A couple pyro wings, that's wonderful. And then a hero top shell. Whoa. And I'm like, I, I, it's sort of an out of body experience. And it's twisted, right? It's like, yeah. it's been sitting in storage for 40 years and it has this weird little, you, it, you can't use it as is, but it gives you all the data you need. Yeah. Like the length is there, the, the, the cockpit is, is perfect. And I had it 3D, I sent it to a company, well, there's a company nearby where I live that has one of those really expensive mm -hmm. 3D scanners yep, yep. on the arm. Scanner, yep. Yeah, um, direct dimensions, I think is what they're called, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, uh, paid a couple hundred bucks, had that scanned. A friend of mine who's very knowledgeable and skilled in CAD, Josh Maruska, un, you know, Oh, twisted wow, it. Wow, so you're not measuring, you're actually using kind yeah, of original scan yeah, data yeah. and unwarping it. Yeah, and we made what we, what we unofficially call the V6, but it was never released. I'm like, yeah. I can't let this data out because I, you know, my friend did it. Like, if we if we pay him, then sure, everybody gets it, but no one's gonna, you know, like, invest in that kind of time because we do so much yeah. on the back end just because we love it. Yeah. So anyway. That's where we are with this. You know, like I built a Red 5, I built some wings. The wings were still resin. And then for this one, over the top, the wings are completely scratch built now. Uh, this is laser cut acrylic that I do in my shop, 1 16th, and then mm -hmm. 040 styrene. So the, mm. the bottom is thinner than the top, like the original. And I live and die on reference, right? Like, you, if you get better pictures, you can build a better model. Yeah. I got better pictures of the Red 1, finally. And that's always been sort of like my white whale. Like, I, I, I love it. It's really underrepresented. It's not documented well. Uh, and I was like, oh, I can finally nail it. So I just went full bore with this guy. And as you iterate, you know, you're talking about the form primarily is where the improvements are coming from. Are you also iterating on your finishing, on decals, or yeah, this this weathering? thing is covered in decals. Yeah, like you know, it's so ridiculous small. amount of decals. Yeah. yeah, lots of little hash marks, lots of little decals. Uh, my friends Ed and Craig, uh, I deed them because they're incredible with uh, identifying, you know, the source material. And uh, I redrew them in Illustrator, and, and you know, I bought either I had some of the kits, I had to buy a couple of the decals, um, and I had decals made. Uh, and the bottom, these torpedo tubes are in different locations on one red one, two, three, and five. And then the pyros are a completely separate animal. <laughs> so I had to redo that whole bottom and so it's brass. I found, uh, I had a really clear picture uh, of the carcass of Red 5 that shows the serial number of the little bulbs that were used, these old bulbs from the 70s. So I sourced those. So they're in the torpedo tubes like the, at the end of the, uh, the piece of uh, brass. Uh, no one knows it's there, really hard to see without like a flashlight and like the right angle, but you know, I know they're there. <laughs> and there were lights in each uh, laser cannon to, to sort of flash. They thought maybe they could use that. I don't know if it, it was functional for, for filming, but that's why those heat sinks are there. Mm. And that, that's, that's, a, that's a functional... Actual heat sink to dissipate yeah. the, the yeah. original bulbs. Yeah, oh. which is great. Oh. And then, of course, in the engines, the yeah. same thing. Yeah, Because the lights they were using back then were incredibly hot and bright. And, yeah. Having done so many X-Wings, when you get a new hull, what's the timeline to go from... The, the, the fabrication of one of those to the finish of the piece. I got better reference in November, and this was done maybe six weeks ago. So 
however okay. long that is. All right, is. so about six months. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, on and off. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing yeah. just this. Yes, yes. But I, I, I am pleased to announce that, oh. you know, when the wings close, they snap. I, I have magnets hidden in them, uh, and you just have to sort of hand align it. But they're, they're flat. We did it. <laughs> it was just a little thing where I was very, very, very happy that that worked. And it, it's, it's a, a little bit of a feat because also in the root, there's uh, cardstock. That, mm. And that's what, they, that's what yep, ILM yep. did. Yeah, and that, that extra little thickness, if you're not doing it exactly right, the, du the thickness of the double stick tape will keep the wings from closing. So I had, I had like two or three attempts before I realized exactly where I had to put the tape to make sure the wings close. There was a moment where I was like, I got so far and I'm gonna screw it up with this one little thing at the very end, because it's sort of late in the build when you're doing that part. So I got so nervous as you're doing it, even though in my mind, I knew it's like, it's your model, you built it, but because it looks so much like something that came out of the 70s. Yeah. That I've knocked so much stuff off of this thing <laughs> while building. It's, it's wow. been regular. Yeah, that happens. But like with the paint, everybody seems to think or tends to think, and who can blame them, that the X-Wings are kind of like a muddy tannish color because that's how a couple of them look now. Mm -hmm. I, I know for, pretty much for a fact at this point that they were, at least this one was this starkly white in 76 when it was on stage. Not all of them, they were all painted a little differently, but this, this fella is, you know, sort of a weird, bright X-Wing. What a journey, over 20 yeah. years. Ooh, and, and I was at 3210 Studio yes, of course. two or three weeks ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we found the pins that, uh, that are in the sides. The, these, these are actual like um, electrical ports. Mm. So For power, works, yeah. works the, the lights and the motors. Um, so two of them are functional in this one. If you, like the first two are positive and negative and the lights will come on. It's just the ah, engine lights. All right, okay. But that's so a you can thing. actually power it the way they had it on set. Yeah, when they were doing yeah. And, and the same with the back. The, um, there's, there's a row of them on the, on the butt plate. Uh, and actually on the real ones, if you take the nose off, there would be a ring of three here and three here for if it's nose mounted. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Nights and weekends, not even the model that you are primarily working on. You're working on multiple projects at once. And That's the way that another goes, project, yeah. something that you're showing off here, a Bomar Monk. Yeah. So, of course. Everybody's favorite. Yeah, everyone's favorite. <laughs> Well, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, there's a renewed interest, of course. It showed up in Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the folks over at uh, Tippett Studio did their armature yeah, version. Yeah, I talked to Sean yesterday yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, so tell yeah. me about your version. Okay, so it all, this is goofy uh, and unsurprising, but it all started with, uh, I used to work for the NIH. We have an MRI suite downstairs. And uh, a researcher came up and was like, you're the 3D print guy? And I was like, I am. And he said, I have a file of a brain, can you print it for me? I said, sure. And then just out of curiosity, I asked, Where, where'd you get it? He said, actually, it's my brain. I figured out how to make MRI data watertight. And I was like, go on. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, and I said, of course, like, could you do my brain? And he goes, well, like, how fast can I get my print? And I said, well, I could print it at home and clear and have it to you Monday. And he's like, I think I need to calibrate the MRI next week. <laughs> and I was like, we have an accord. So. I threw my head in the machine. A couple of days later, I had my brain. You know, okay. I'm like spinning it around. Yes. Like, okay, what do I do with this? What this do you do with the model of your brain? Yeah, yeah. What in Star Wars has a brain? There were two things came to mind immediately: the the brain in the the uh, container from City of the Lost Children, okay, and the Bomar monk. No, no, okay. Kane robot from Robocop. Well, that was a third. Okay, and I was reminded right. of that. Sean yeah. was like, "What about Kane?" Yeah, and I was yeah. like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," <laughs> but. This, this is, the, you know, that's a miniature, this, model miniature, come this, on. And this one wins. And I like yeah. that it's like kind of like Tim Burton-y and it's yeah. kind of like gross and creature-y, but it's also a robot. It hit all the sweet spots. So I just, <laughs> it's way bigger than I intended, mm. which happens like well, you, when you, you build. What did you scale it to? I scaled it to the sourced glass globe. God. Because I was, I was looking for a glass globe with no flange, very hard to find. Yeah. Finally found a terrarium uh, for a succulent and it, it sat inside a, a little plinth, you know. So four inches, perfect, no flange, uninterrupted, no seam line, no polishing necessary. I print the brain to that size. By the time you get to the back, I'm like, wow, it's like twice as big <laughs> as I intended. <laughs> I couldn't find a two inch globe, so I just went with it. Oh and it's God. all, I, I, uh, I had a little bit of reference of the Tippet one. I had a little bit of reference of the one from Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the Return of the Jedi one was real janky. Like it was, it, it's awful up close. You know, it's like PVC pipe and mm -hmm. whatever. It didn't need to be anything because it was so far. But in the this back. is your interpretation. Like yeah, this is like unlike the X-wing. This is like this is like old yeah. old grandpa. You yeah. know, with his with his uh, little 
shawl. Well, I, I love the shape. I mean, the finish is beautiful. It looks heavy. I mean, the way you painted it looks like it's you know a, yeah. old a rusted metal. Uh, I, I love the, the netting you have here. Of course, you've sort of talked to the folks at Tippett and, and their journey of creating that mesh texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I threw the the net on top just for like I, I would always joke it's like the Scooby Doo scary, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, like yeah, little yeah, tattered. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted a little bit of extra oh. texture to make it look like it's old and weird. And uh, yeah, it's and all pretty, your tubing pretty. there. Everything just adds. I, I love yeah. to, to, and it, this is kind of like a riff on it. My own design in a lot of ways. Like uh, the legs don't work, which I love. That's mm. like a total classic. You, you get a model, and then you start un trying to figure out how it works, and you realize the modeler didn't care. Like there's no way these would be functional, but it looks <laughs> great. You know, that's that's classic sci-fi. Wow. But uh, yeah, I love to 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 move uh, or to to figure out where a tube is going to go and make it look functional. Yeah. Like it means something. Yeah. See, so yeah, like well. little sensors and yeah. nonsense. Yeah. And now you have a home for your brain. I do. And, and this little guy moves. I like to think that this is like, you know, his tail, like when he gets excited, it chatters or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's gross. It's a it's safety totally catch weird. for the, yeah. the brain, just in yeah. case it yeah. falls. Yeah, in case it drops. Wow. Yeah. And, and obscure character. Super. Uh, yeah, but yeah. you that, found I, I love making the dumb stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Jason, what a treat. Uh, thank you for showing off your X-Wing. Yeah, your Bomar mug. absolutely. Um, and it's so great to finally meet you at one of You as well. Thank you for coming. Yeah.